Well, hello everybody. My name is Artie, and welcome to this vlog episode. Uh, this vlog episode is episode seven, and I like to uh, thank everybody uh, for subscribing to my channel. We finally reached 600 subscribers, so congratulations, guys. We made it. Now, our next goal is to get a thousand subscribers. So, please share my channel, and let's hope we can get that subscription uh, number a little higher. But uh, thank you so much for uh, subscribing to my channel and, you know, try to watch these videos as I try to post them. I've been really busy with, like, schoolwork and everything, so right now I'm focusing on getting my uh, computer information technology degree at Southern New Hampshire University. That's a Bachelor of Science degree. So I've been busy doing that. Uh, I uh, Right now I'm, a, I'm pretty much into week six of my two courses, which are Intro to Marketing and Human Relations and Administration. Um, I'm week six uh, in those courses, and I have at least about two weeks left of work to do, and then my classes will be done. And then I start my next term, which will be uh, Business Law 1 and Financial Accounting. So I have to take some, at least like 12 business courses, and then take like four computer courses and stuff like that. So I'm not going to bore you with details, but I am getting that degree, so that's why I'm not really posting these videos too much. Um, but I'm going to post this quick video of this vlog. <clears throat> Actually, this is going to be my very first uh, wrestling uh, review video. Now, I want to give out the disclaimer, or I should say, you know, protect myself here. Um, I know wrestling is fake. Well, at least the entertainment wrestling is fake. Like, WWE is like staged wrestling is what I call it. Um, the real wrestling is what happens in high school or college or maybe in the uh, Olympics they have wrestling you know the traditional style of wrestling where you know you you, you do like certain techniques you know <clears throat> uh, while you're like on a mat and you basically you don't do like the high maneuver stuff in the ring and stuff you just like just sit in one place on a mat on the floor and actually wrestle um, and WWE is just stage wrestling because it's like, you know, you had the turnbuckles and everything and the ropes. Um, <clears throat> so I just want to point that out before I actually start, you know, ranting on this uh, r latest review of, of WrestleMania 30. Now, <clears throat> um, oh, by the way, there's got to be some spoilers in this video. So if you guys don't want to know anything about WrestleMania 30 or any of the uh, match results, I uh, highly recommend just to uh, stay away or just try to click away from the video, but I just want to get my points out there in the beginning of the intro video, so I just want to, you know, do that vlog stuff. Um, so let's begin with uh, the uh, intro sequence to WrestleMania 30. I thought Hulk Hogan, The Rock, and Stone Cold Steve Austin was a great entrance. I liked it. Um, I liked the intro part of the uh, WrestleMania 30. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, gave the uh, you know crowd an extra pop and like get their energy going. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. <clears throat> it's good to see him back. Um, I know Stone Cold uh, makes uh, the uh, uh, he does the uh, podcast one stuff on. Uh, excuse me. Uh, he does the uh, podcast one stuff <clears throat> on a Steve Austin show. Uh, the, the is uh, he does the PG one and he does the uh, Unleashed one, which is the uh, mature rated. Uh, podcast. So, if you guys want to check him out, I'm not actually doing self promotions here. But if you want to do, if you want guys want to check out his uh, podcast, it's on podcastone.com, and you can uh, uh, check out his uh, uh, Steve Austin show and then Steve Austin show Unleashed. So, there's two different brands. But if you want the cleaner version, watch the Steve Austin show. If you want the you know raw uncut version, uh, you can watch the uh, Unleashed. So. Uh, I guess uh, for The Rock, uh, he's been, uh, I think he's been making movies still. Um, he's, you know, joined back the wrestling scene. Like, I, uh, I think I probably saw him at the Hall of Fame. He probably wasn't at the Hall of Fame, but, um, or maybe he was, but I didn't get to see him that much. But, um, and that's another thing I want to talk about later is the Hall of Fame ceremony. But, um, <clears throat> uh, so, anyways, and Huck Hogan, you know, he's doing the, uh, you know, the actual promotions and everything in, uh, in the intro sequence, I thought that was awesome um, to see Hulk back, you know, wrestling, uh, hosting WrestleMania 30. Um, so the intro was pretty good. Uh, the kickoff match was the Uso match um, between uh, the Real Americans. 
<clears throat> uh, well, I I I, for, uh, I forgot that WrestleMania 30 was on at seven o'clock, I believe. So, or I think it was a pre-show match, and I didn't get to see it yet because um, I've been busy doing things. But uh, I heard that the uh, I believe the Usos still retain the uh, tag team titles. So, uh, congratulations to the Usos retaining it. Um, but uh, again, I, I read some of the uh, review matches on it, and yeah, some people said it was rated like a B, like a B average uh, um, res uh, wrestling match. So. You know, uh, to be honest, I don't really watch the pre-show stuff. Um, I usually just skip because the ones I really want to watch are like, you know, the Battle Royale, the uh, the Undertaker match, which I will definitely talk about later. Um, that's going to be ranting for, uh, I might rant for that one for like 20 or 30 minutes. But, um, <clears throat> well, probably a little less than that, but uh, I'll give my opinions on why uh, that match was a fluke. But, um, so anyways... Back to the intro, um, I think after that match was the uh, Daniel Bryan versus Triple H match. Now that match was pretty damn good. I watched the whole thing on that one. Um, uh, th that was pretty good. I, I'm not gonna lie. The um, I, I th thought uh, Daniel Bryan really sold, you know, his moves and Triple H. You know, he did everything he could to uh, you know bring the best out of Daniel Bryan during that match, and he. Did an amazing job, um, and of course, you know, the authority, you know, damaging Daniel Bryan at the end with the shoulder injury, and he, but that chair shot, but, um, oh yeah, during Triple H's entrance, um, uh, again, I thought that was still the same, I thought there was another, inst like, they did the same thing, uh, the same entrance at some WrestleMania, but I forgot what it was, but, um, he did the same thing with the, uh, you know, bow down to the Kings by, uh, uh, Motorhead, so, um, Again, I thought that uh, entrance was pretty good. Um, I thought the whole match was pretty good in uh, in general. Um, so, and uh, Daniel Bryan actually defeats Triple H, and we'll continue to the uh, Triple Threat match. Now, after that match was, I believe, was the Battle Royale match, maybe. Yeah, I think it was the Battle Royale match, and then after that was the John Cena match. And then it was the uh, the Undertaker match, and then the uh, the Divas match, and then was the uh, main event. So, anyways, um, so after the uh, Daniel Bryan match uh, was the oh no, it was the uh, tag it was the uh, uh, the tag match uh, with uh, with the Shield versus the uh, New Age Outlaws with Kane. Um, Okay, that match was really quick. Um, that match didn't last not that long. Um, it was pretty quick. It lasted only like two minutes. <laughs> but um, I like the Shields' um, uh, uh, sort of costume they had on their um, like they were wearing like skull masks <laughs> on. I thought that was pretty cool. And um, <clears throat> uh, actually, I just want to make an uh, an, I want to make an announcement that. Uh, uh, Billy Gunn actually suffered an injury while doing that match at the end. Uh, he um, uh, he was spitting up blood, um, not to get too gory here, but he spit up blood after the match. And uh, so doctors confirmed it was probably just maybe a, bl a blood vessel pop, maybe. Like maybe uh, one of his blood vessels pop, and he's that's why the reason he's coughing up blood. But uh, so far the, the doctors are overlooking him overnight, so... So, uh, I send my prayers out to Billy Gunn that he gets well, gets better soon, and I uh, hope he gets healthy, and because uh, I think Monday Night Raw is coming around the corner, so he has to show up. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, back to the uh, tag team match. Uh, again, uh, it, was qu it was a quick match, only lasted two minutes. Again, I thought the uh, uh, Shield did a great job, you know, trying to make it quick. <laughs> Because uh, usually I usually I don't like to watch tag team matches that often. Um, uh, just like just like in WrestleMania in general, uh, if it's like a really good, like really good wrestlers, you know, uh, like good promoter wrestlers, I would say like uh, maybe like Dana Bryan, Randy Orton, or Batista, or any of those other like you know B plus A plus um, you know wrestlers. Um, 
doing a tag team, I might watch that. But um, but again, I always like the one v one atmosphere of wrestling, and you know, one one point, you know, one opponent at a time going at it is just you know you get to focus up, you know which like uh you know wrestler is your favorite and that you want to win and you can actually just focus on one thing at a time in the ring so um so anyways uh i i again i thought the tag team was uh, i rate that a c at least maybe a b b minus i mean it, uh, it was too quick i would rate it like a c pretty much it was not really a a fun match to watch but uh later on was the uh the battle royal um or the Battle Royale, as some people call it. Um, <laughs> uh, again, uh, my pick was actually the Big Show to win it. Um, Cesaro was a big surprise, and Biggie, Langst Biggie uh, Langston was another one that I wanted to win um, the Battle Royale. But unfortunately, it was Cesaro, and they got he won it because now they're making a push on Cesaro to actually become a great superstar into the WWE. I mean, he's he's like they're making a nice big long highway and it's like just an empty highway and it, it's straight down boom straight down memory lane for him or straight down this the, the runway for him uh, so I can't wait to see Cesaro in the future um, I can't wait to see some of his promos for some of the matches later on for the other wrestlers so I can't wait to see what he does um, so congratulations Cesaro for winning the battle royal um, the next match after that was the, uh, I believe, John Cena versus um, Bray White. Um, so the John Cena, uh, I never, I, to be honest, let me. Uh, now I watched John Cena wrestle um, since the start, like during the uh, Attitude Era, um, like he, when he was like the basic thugonomics, <laughs> like way back when, um, when he had the. Uh, you know the spinner belt the w remember that the spinner wwe belt yeah i remember that it was actually invented um but back then the um i mean i i like that john cena back way back when but this john cena i mean i do agree uh, like i like his like you know when he does like the make a wish foundations like he supports the troops you know he's a you know he's a great guy for doing that you know he he supports the kids which I really do like, and you know, you know that's good for John Cena, you know, to help you know uh, the younger audience, you know, uh, to actually perform for the younger younger audience. But uh, when he wrestled Bray White, uh, Bray White is actually, um, uh, I mean, he's a, he's a good wrestler, but um, uh, his promotions are pretty good. Um, so I think he's like Bray White's got to be like the next Undertaker, but. Well, not probably not like you know what the Undertaker accomplished, but probably as a character side of it, like the Undertaker character at least, um, or something along those lines. Maybe like kind of like a mix of the Undertaker and Jake the Snake Roberts combined, and bam, you got Bray White, you know. But not like the uh, you know the skill level of the Undertaker, but more like you know Bray White as Bray White. But. <clears throat> um, Again, I thought that match was like, uh, yeah, I thought it was boring to watch. I didn't really like it. Um, once again, uh, no offense to John, but I just don't like some of his matches. I he needs to make more wrestling moves up. To be honest, he always has the same like shoulder blocks to you know um, you can't see me moves. Um, he, like he has to have like submission holds and everything. It's like it's time to make up some new moves, man. <laughs> It's been it's it's just getting too old and too stale to watch and it gets really boring and you know Bray White heck of a wrestler heck you know but again just the between John Cena and Bray White I thought it was pretty boring I didn't really want to watch that one but you know congrats to John Cena because he won that match against Bray White and now we get in to the main event I call now even though this is not really the main event but to me it is it's the Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar. Oh my God, where do I should start from here? The, oh my God. Okay, so the Undertaker uh, basically had a cool entrance. I like that. Uh, it's uh, Brock Lesnar came out with Paul Heyman. You know, he's getting ready to battle the 
the dead man <laughs> of Death Valley. Um, so when the two, uh, you know, competitors came came together in the ring, uh, I, uh, it was very slow uh, because you know the Undertaker's getting old, of course. <laughs> He's getting up in his, his 50s now, um, so th they had to take the match very slow. And uh, I thought the match was pretty good, uh, slow wise at least for him and Brock. It was okay. It was okay. But, um, man, at the end, though, when The Undertaker was defeated by Brock Lesnar, this really dropped, like, my mouth just dropped. Like, what the heck just happened? And, like, how would you lose to Brock Lesnar? I mean, like, script... Like, um, I've been getting some, like, sources, but, um, saying that Brock Lesnar, um, like, like, changed the script at the last minute for the, uh, WrestleMania 30 match against The Undertaker. Now, um, I, like, I've been also seeing some sources that, oh yeah, Brock Lesnar, you know, defeated The Undertaker fair and square, but to be honest, I, like... I'm like I'm shocked. I'm still shocked. Um, uh, right now I'm recording this video like around five o'clock in the morning because I got nothing else better to do. I'm bored. But uh, <laughs> um, so I'm still shocked. I'm still uh, wide awake from this, and um, I'll probably get some sleep for it. But man, like the streak ended already. Like twenty-one and one. Like this doesn't make any sense. I mean, to lose to Brock Lesnar does not make sense at all. I mean, the perfect opponent to break the streak is actually Shawn Michaels I think that's it <laughs> I think Shawn Michaels should have broke the streak um, I mean Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker are the two greatest performers at Wrestlemania in his Wrestlemania history like the two greatest so it would have been more appropriate if Shawn Michaels actually uh, beat the streak you know defeated The Undertaker streak and then you know the two. You know the two wrestlers. The fa you know the legendary wrestlers will just hug, like bros, like the, what they did in our. You know when the Undertaker went twenty and zero when he did Hell in a Cell match against Triple H, and Shawn Michaels was a special guest referee. You know Shawn Michaels would have hugged you know Undertaker, and then they both walk out with you know chin held high and heads held high. You know get their fists in the air, and uh, you know you know doing applause and thank you for the WWE universe, and boom, it's over. You know. You know, both Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker are just walking off into the sunset. You know, that would that would have been a perfect ending for, you know, to lose the streak. You know, that would have been a very perfect ending. But, Brock Lesnar defeats. <laughs> Brock Lesnar defeats Undertaker. That does not make any sense whatsoever. Um, I'm still shocked. I'm very pissed off. <laughs> I, I, like I'm lo I'm lost for words, man. I can't like I can't wrap my r mind around Brock Lesnar defeating the Undertaker. Like Brock Lesnar is a he's a part-time promoter, and the Undertaker, you know, he's a part-time promoter too. I mean, he's got a legend a legend's contract is what we call it. Um, but I don't know. I just disagree with this. Um, if they actually change the contract at the last minute, and this is for real. That the Undertaker should have lost to Brock Lesnar, then I would congratulate Brock Brock Lesnar for uh, defeating the Undertaker at WrestleMania, and I'd like to congratulate Paul Heyman because he's the first manager and probably the one of the greatest managers since uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan that Paul Heyman actually helped Brock Lesnar to uh, defeat the streak. So, but. If it is false that uh, Brock Lesnar actually changed his mind during the ring, <laughs> during the match, um, or maybe like the Undertaker just told Brock Lesnar, "Hey, you know, let's like let's end it here. You know, I'm done. I want to retire by next year in the next Hall of Fame. You know, I'll do one more match and that's it. You know." So I think the Undertaker will have one more match because. 
Sting is actually coming back to the WWE. Well, this, uh, rumors are going around that are, you know, this latest video that his magic number or his favorite number is 31, which is WrestleMania 31. That's coming up. Um, that Sting will probably want to wrestle The Undertaker uh, at WrestleMania 31 next year. So I believe Undertaker will have one more match, but he will be definitely inducted into the Hall of Fame by next year. Or maybe possibly the year after that. But well, we shall see. We shall see. But I want to wrap up with the Undertaker and Brock Lesnar thing. Undertaker should have went 22-0. and Or um, I began in some sources that Vince McMahon uh, actually wrote the script that Undertaker should have won uh, that match besides Brock Lesnar. And that Vince McMahon has got to fire... Brock Lesnar but I don't think that's ever going to happen I think that's a lie but like I said I got to make sure I double check my sources but if that is true I'd like to be corrected so write down the sources in the comments below I would like to hear about it um uh, anything else oh yes so I want to just wrap up with that thought <laughs> so if the Undertaker did lose you know congrats Brock but if Brock actually you know, kind of breached his little contract kind of, you know, scheme or actually screw job The Undertaker. Um, because at, at the end of the match, you saw Brock Lesnar make a wink at the end. So that's that's a signal for something. I don't know what that is, but we'll just see. We'll figure it out. But, um, so anyways, let's, let's move on. Uh, let's do uh, the next wrestling match, which is the Divas uh, Championship match. Once again, it's boring. Um, I don't watch those type of, type of matches. Uh, there's like basically no talent at all for the uh, women's... Well, I mean, there's some talent. You know, you got the Hart family, the uh, Snooker family, and you got A.G. Lee. <laughs> but, um, again, it's just... Uh, there's no talent, it's boring, and I barely watch it anyways. But, uh, but hey... It's a, it's a Divas Championship match, you know. <laughs> As a man myself, you know, you like to watch the ladies. But anyways. <laughs> um, but, again, I thought it was boring. I didn't really care for it. So, just want to get it over with and move on to the next match, which I believe uh, was the main event. The last match of the uh, WrestleMania. Uh, that was Daniel Bryan versus Batista versus Randy Orton. Um... Again, that match was amazing. Like, I thought, um, you know, Randy Orton, Batista, and Daniel Bryan did a very good job doing this match. Um, I like the part where Batista actually tried to did the Batista bomb, and then Randy Orton, you know, did the RKO to Daniel Bryan on the on the table. St Spanish announced table. But, um, <clears throat> um, but, wow, Daniel Bryan really put resilience to you know, in that match, he never gave up, even between Batista and Randy Orton, I mean, he was one tough son of a gun, so, um, but the result is Daniel Prime, oh yeah, I forgot the results for, uh, some of the other matches I forgot to tell about, uh, actually, The Shield won the, uh, New Age Outlaws match, um, Battle Royal Cesaro, of course, Under uh, Brock Lesnar won against Undertaker, um, and the other one was, uh, uh, the Divas champion was, of course, A.G. Lee. <laughs> so she still retains the championship belt to this day. <laughs> so I think she might try to pull a Bruno San Martino move <laughs> to become the, um, like, having the championship belt for, like, a certain amount of years. So we'll just see. But, uh, so back to the main event. Um, again, uh, everybody performed pretty well. Um. I'm not gonna lie, it was a really good match. And that near towards the end of the match, uh, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon came out and wanted really to cripple Danny Bryan again. But um, but unfortunately, Danny Bryan got the upper hand and took out uh, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon to the, uh, outside the ring. And basically, uh, Danny Bryan got the uphold of the match and pretty much um, uh, did a lot of submission moves, uh, did a lot of high knees and everything to uh, take down their opponents of Batista and uh, Randy Orton. Um, so Daniel, Bry uh, I think Daniel Bryan uh, had a submission hold 
uh, for the final match and basically tapped out Batista. Um, so Dana Bryan is now, or was it who tapped out? Yeah, it, it was either yeah, it was Daniel. It was it was Batista. Uh, he tapped out to Dana Bryan and basically uh, Dana Bryan won the World Heavyweight Championship belt or belts, I should say. So. If I give a grade to WrestleMania 30, I would give it maybe a B minus. The only reason why, I mean, they had some really good matches. I, I'm not gonna lie, the matches were pretty good. Uh, there was only two matches I really didn't like. It was the um, that I watched at least, uh, the Divas Championship match, and um, uh, the tag team match with Shield and New Age Outlaws. So, and Kane. So. Those are the only two matches I really didn't like uh, during that pay-per-view. Maybe the early tag team match, if I did watch the pre-show, so that would have been three. But uh, for me, it's only two, since I only watched two bad ones. But all the rest of the ones were pretty good. Um, so that is my basic review on WrestleMania 30. Uh, again, if you watch this video, I just told you the spoilers. Um, <laughs> so if I did spoil it for all of you, I apologize. But... I just want to get my rant out there or my opinion video on who should have been like the winners and should have been the losers. Um, but this is basically my first um, uh, my first video on uh, wrestling. Uh, and actually, um, uh, I want to tell the story, a short story that um, I actually, how I started getting into wrestling. I should have done this in the beginning of the video, but I just want to do it like in the end here. Um, I started watching wrestling, uh, or entertainment wrestling for, uh, like around when Huck Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage were tag team partners. So that's how long I've been watching wrestling. Um, uh, I grew up, uh, watching the Attitude Era, uh, along with ECW. Uh, I watched, um, probably my favorite wrestlers, uh, back then was, of course, uh, The Undertaker, but the other ones were Eddie Guerrero, uh, you know, rest in peace, my friend. Um, he was a great wrestler, great wrestler. I mean, as soon as he passed away, like, wow. Like, yeah, we're gonna, we lost a legend here. And he was such a great wrestler. I, I miss Eddie. He was such a great wrestler. Um, so, God bless you, buddy. Um, another one is, um, uh, I like, I, I like the, um, like Ska Hall back in the day, you know, back in the NWO days. I did watch WCW back in the old days um, when it was around like uh, WCW Monday Night Monday Night Nitro uh, when they did WCW Thunder, but I thought Thunder was pretty bad, but um, <laughs> a bad promoting uh, a product at least. Um, <laughs> uh, but Monday Night Nitro was the big one, and uh, one of my favorite wrestlers was Diamond Niles Page. Uh, and Goldberg. I absolutely love Goldberg. Goldberg was my favorite wrestler growing up, uh, watching him in, in, D, in WCW. I mean, th that guy was a beast. <laughs> um, he was a previously football player, but uh, when he got to the WWE, like back in 2003, I believe, um, oh man, I remember that SummerSlam event where he actually, it was in a Elimination Chamber match, and he actually speared Chris Jericho right through the pot. I was like, wow, that guy's got a lot of power. And he done a lot of jackknife power bombs and everything. and Or I should say jackknives. Um, but anyways. Um, <laughs> so, not to me about ranting about my favorite wrestlers back in the day. But um, as I was growing up. but um, So yeah, that's how I got into wrestling. Uh, my, uh, I actually first watched it. Uh, my favorite wrestler starting out was Huck Hogan or Hulk Hogan I should say sorry um, and then it was Macho Man Randy Savage oh yeah um, that guy was my all-time favorite um, I, I just love his catch the phrases they're always good you know <laughs> um, I like the you know the Slim Jim stuff like stepping on Slim Jim oh yeah you know that was like the best ever and um, <laughs> Um, and then, you know, Hulk Hogan, uh, I, I don't get the feud between Hulk Hogan and Macho Man, but, uh, well, you know, you know, Macho Man behind the scenes was a little bit nuts, but he was a lovable guy, you know, great, great entertainer, I miss that guy to death, 
Um, God bless you, Randy. Miss you, buddy. Um, oh, yeah. I forgot to say. Um, so, I forgot to say about something about the Hall of Fame induction ceremony that I want to talk about. I'll make it short and sweet. Uh, pretty much, I liked uh, Jake the Snake Roberts' speech. I thought that was the best speech in the night uh, and Ultimate Warriors. But uh, Razor Ramon's speech was kind of short. But, you know, hey, Scott Hall's in the Hall of Fame. Awesome. Hey, yo. Um, and basically, Jake the Snake Roberts, um, oh man, that speech was unbelievable. That Actually, that speech made me cry. Um, if you ever get the chance to watch uh, the Hall of Fame ceremony, go watch Jake the Snake Roberts' speech. It's unbelievable. It's probably the most... Probably the most, it's probably the best speech I ever listened to ever. It had so much emotion into it. It just like, boom, like somebody just punched me right in the stomach, you know? It was like, it's like, wow. I mean, I was literally crying. And uh, I remember one moment when he took his grandson and put him on stage. He said, by, Re by WrestleMania 30, I want to see this guy, like WrestleMania 50, I want to see my grandson as the future superstar. I was like, wow, that was like un unreal, unreal. You know. I was like, that just gave me goosebumps. But um so yeah, I I mean, if I was a little bit, you know, if I you know, grew up in the 80s and saw Jake the Snake Roberts, I would definitely watch him every night. But unfortunately, <laughs> I was born in 1989, so I didn't really get to watch Jake the Snake Roberts, you know, growing up, but um but now, since I'm watching, like, some of the reruns, <laughs> um, man, he was a great wrestler. And I always would do the DDT move on the trampoline with my brothers. And I always wanted to figure out who invented the DDT move. And now I know. It's Jake the Snake Roberts. God bless you, man. Congratulations on getting inducted to the Hall of Fame. Scott Hall, thank you for, you know, you know, good for you. Fighting your demons, and now you're finally in the Hall of Fame. Awesome. And also, um, Lita's in the Hall of Fame. And by the way, I had a huge, everybody had a huge crush on Lita, and I'm one of those guys. But um, Lita was awesome. I mean, she can really perform. She was a really great wrestler. So props to your future endeavors, Lita. Thank you for wrestling in the Attitude Era. It was perfect for you. It was great. I'm going to miss you. But, uh, and also we had uh, Carlos, or Carlito Colon, uh, was in the... Uh, Hall of Fame Simmer. I didn't get really. Uh, again, he was like way back when. So he did. He was a. He's an old time. He's a. Um, what we call the old legends of wrestling. Uh, he's an old timer. So I didn't really get to watch him when I was growing up. I wasn't even born yet. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna have to watch the reruns to watch him. But um, uh, uh, the other inductee, the celebrity one, was uh, Mr. T, celebrity wing of the Hall of Fame. I always watch. <laughs> when he oh that speech was hilarious I um that speech was hilarious but it was very very uh religious <laughs> it's like thank it's like Mr. T thanking his mother <laughs> I'd like to thank my mother <laughs> oh man that was funny um so yep yeah, WWE Hall of Fame brought to you by Mr. T's mother <laughs> but anyways um so, yeah, congratulations to Mr. T. Proud of you, man. Um, that was, you're real, really good at Rocky uh, Rocky 3, so awesome job, man. Um, and also another one uh, is, now I did say Jake the Snape, Scott Hall. Oh, Paul Bear. Paul Bear is probably going to be going down as probably the top three best uh, wrestling managers in WWE history. What I say top three, I mean... Bobby the Brain Heenan, Paul Heyman, and Paul Bear. Okay, Paul Bear is one of those great wrestling managers. I'm gonna miss him so much. Uh, holding up the urn for the Undertaker and Kane. Oh man, he was a really great manager. I'm gonna miss that guy. I mean, I watched him growing up, and my favorite, my favorite uh, WrestleMania moment was when he took the urn and then the flashlight just came on and then it just shined the whole ring and there's like a big spotlight in the urn. That was awesome. That was my favorite moment for him. Um, but, um, so yeah, I'm really going to miss Paul Bear. Rest in peace, buddy. God bless you. 
I'm gonna miss you. Um, and also another Hall of Famer that I really, really liked, the Ultimate Warrior. Now, his speech was probably the longest speech in WWE history, but probably the speech that really didn't make sense. <laughs> but there are probably some parts that did make sense, but there were some parts that were like, uh, I think you're ranting a little bit. But it's the Ultimate Warrior. That's his gimmick. You know, that's what he does. <laughs> um, but, oh man, one hell of a wrestler. You know, back in the old days when he wrestled Hulk Hogan. Oh man, that was some great times. Just running down that ring. You know, that entrance music, man. He has one of the greatest entrance musics of all time. Just boom, and that guitar riff. Dun, 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 dun. And then he just runs down that ring like full speed, you know, high on testosterone. Everything. <laughs> Shaking the ropes, doing everything, going nuts. Um, but, congratulations to the Ultimate Warrior for getting into the Hall of Fame. Finally, right? <laughs> it's been far too long, far too long. And oh man, I would say my favorite rest, uh, my favorite um, uh, Ultimate Warrior uh, moment, I would say, is probably the moment where he <laughs> when he did his uh, promo shoots, absolutely hilarious. I like the space shuttle, like the space shuttle thing, where the space shuttle will take off, <sighs> you know, <laughs> going through the depths of hell. You know, it, it was just absolutely weird. <laughs> His promos were so weird. I, I couldn't stop laughing watching them, but it's entertainment. He can entertain. He can shoot promos. He can wrestle. Done. You know, he's a superstar. He's a legendary superstar. He's a legend. WWE legend. So, congratulations to the Ultimate Warrior. Congratulations to the, all the Hall of Famers. You guys rock, man. You guys rock. So, that is my wrap up on this video my vlog um so i kind of want to do like a mix of a vlog to a uh, wrestlemania 30 review and a hall of fame review so if you guys have any questions um feel free to comment um down below in this video i would love to take your questions on anything about recent matches in the past or who i think i should have won the matches or pretty much who my favorite superstar is or any any of those like suggestions or questions doesn't matter um you got any question will do pretty much um, I'll answer them um, and and once again I'll disclose here that I know that WWE is stage wrestling because <laughs> I can hear talking their next move in the ring so the man the camera microphones can pick them up so don't worry I know it's stage wrestling but I'm a big fan of it so that is this will end my vlog video and by the way thanks for the 600 subscribers and if you guys seen this video, please subscribe to my video, um, or subscribe to my video, subscribe to my channel, <laughs> like the video if you like it, thumbs up, or a thumbs down if you don't like it, I like honesty, uh, if you guys want to, uh, ant got why guys want me to, uh, answer any questions, uh, please comment in the comment box below, even though I don't like that comment box, but comment down below and I'll answer your questions. Um, thank you so much for watching, as always. See you later.